I'm Richie Castellano. I'm an independent producer and songwriter. I play guitar and keyboards in Blue Oyster Cult, and I'm also a video product specialist for AMS. This is my home studio. Uh, when I was about 10 years old, my uncle gave me this analog four track recorder, it was a cassette, it had a cassette deck in it. And uh, so you record four tracks on cassette and that was great, but I quickly ran out of space on that. So I moved up a few years later to a 16 track and this is still back in the days of analog. So it was a reel to reel Fostex machine and uh, I think only 14 tracks worked on it. Home recording is a lot different than when I started recording because you had to get consumer quality four tracks or eight tracks that worked on cassettes. And the difference between the quality you were getting at home from studio quality was huge. That was a huge gap. Uh, over the years, that gap has reduced. So now you can get really good high definition quality in your home studio. Later, as it got even better, you know, you had these amazing plugins and then awesome audio interfaces and everything got more affordable and it became more plausible to create pro quality stuff in your home. Having a home studio is a huge benefit because basically you're on your own timetable. Whenever you have a couple of hours, you can go get some work done. The biggest thing that I'm noticing, uh, especially through a lot of BOC fans, is they want people in their favorite bands to play on their stuff. So they all have home studios, they're recording their own original material, but they'll say, hey, wouldn't it be really cool to get the guy from this band to do a guitar solo on it, or this guy to play a bass track. Well, now you can, because what they do is they'll send me their, uh, their rough mix, and they'll say, hey, put a solo on this. So they'll email me an MP3, I bring it into Pro Tools, I lay down my guitar on top of it, and I send them back a WAV file, you know, and they slide it right into their session, and it's that easy to collaborate nowadays. If you're building your own home studio, I think it's important not to get carried away all at once. Focus on getting the basics down. The most important thing is the microphone. I mean, you can think, oh, I'm just gonna have to get a cheap microphone and I'll get nice preamps, whatever. The mic really makes a difference. So if you're gonna spend some money on something, make it the microphone. Speakers are also really important. A lot of people kind of cheap out on speakers. I advise against that. Get speakers that are good computer speakers. Don't make great studio mixing speakers. You want something that's made for recording because if you can't hear what you're doing, it's not gonna transfer well to other people's systems. And I also say, don't try to do everything at once. Don't say, okay, I'm gonna get this, 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 and this. You know, get into it, get a basic setup, good mic, decent interface, start making music. Once you find you're limited by something, that's when you should upgrade. I've been playing with Blue Oyster Cult for over 10 years, and it's been an amazing experience. I had the honor of playing with Rudy Sarzo, who was a famous bass player, who's played with a lot of people. And one of the pieces of advice that he gave me was that in this day and age, you have to have video content. You know, under his advice, I started a YouTube channel, I started putting up a few things, and I noticed that, you know, certain things would get more views than others, but it was cool just to be able to produce something and have it instantly go to people who were interested in looking at it. And then I got the idea to do Bohemian Rhapsody, and I said, okay, this is gonna be a real pain, but it'll be worth it. And I basically locked myself down here for a week. And I, when I finished it, I put it up and it started spreading really fast. So that was, I guess you can say, my first viral video. And a lot of great opportunities came from that. And it's all because of YouTube. I started listening to podcasts and, you know, of course I said, wow, this is interesting, I'd like to try this. So I hooked up with a network called Riotcast who does mainly comedy podcasts, and, but they were interested in the idea of doing sort of a uh, geeky music podcast because we're kind of goofy. <laughs> so me and my friends, we do it down here, but unlike other podcasts that are just talking, we have a full band. So it's almost like having a house band, sort of like you'd see on a late night TV show, but in a podcast. So it's called Band Geek, and you can find that on riotcast.com. If you want to find out about my upcoming projects or you want to listen to my music, please go to richiecastellano.com or you could follow me on Twitter at rich underscore castellano.